missed it. They missed Christmas. They missed the first Christmas. So what a sharp contrast, right, between these two groups of people. We have the Magi on the one hand, and then King Herod and the rest of Jerusalem on the other. One group watching and waiting, ready to embrace and celebrate the first Christmas, another group missing the miracle entirely. But as I was studying this passage, I could not help but ask myself, why? What was it that made the Magi embrace Christmas? And what was it that made King Herod miss it? So here's what we're going to do for the rest of our time here. We're going to talk about one reason we can miss Christmas just like King Herod. And then we're going to talk about one way we can embrace it like the Magi. You guys with me? Amen. We're going to talk Amen. about one reason we can miss Christmas like Herod and one way we can embrace it like the Magi. My first point this morning is this. We can miss Christmas when we refuse to make Jesus king. Mm. Oh, yeah. We miss Christmas when we refuse to make Jesus king. Here's why I think King Herod reacted the way that he did. There's something about how this Messiah was described that rubbed him the wrong way. Look what the Magi say. Remember, they say this. Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? Everybody say King. 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 Where is the one born King of the Jews? You see, King Herod learned that another king was going to be born. And this is significant. Because here's the thing about Herod. I really believe he was probably good with Jesus being a teacher. A good moral teacher, a healer, a provider. It was probably good that Jesus bringing joy and peace to the people of Israel. But now, to make him king, why are you going to come? I don't know about that. Because here's the thing about kings. Okay, coming back. Kings were to be submitted to, right? And I doubt that King Herod wanted to submit. Anyone here relate to that today? Anyone else have a hard time submitting to Jesus as king? Because maybe if we're honest with ourselves, we can say, yeah, I'm good with the Christmas nativity story with the cute little sheep and the donkey. And I consider myself a good moral person. I go to church every so often. I'm spiritual because I don't sin that much. So Chris. But surrendering my life to Jesus, giving up my needs, giving up, getting what I want when I want it, making Jesus my king, my Lord, I don't know if I want that. Because this was King Herod. And I believe the rest of Jerusalem at this point. They were good with religion. They were good with doing the right things. But they were not good with Jesus as king. And I relate with King Herod in this way. You know, growing up, Christmas was my favorite time of the year because it was so easy to do spiritual things because everyone was doing spiritual things too. I participated in my church's Christmas performances, I love giving gifts to my friends and family, I love spreading cheer and joy, I, I felt myself wanting to serve people more, I wanted to put others before myself, it's just the Christmas spirit, right? That's what we feel, we just feel like, oh my God, I just want to be a good person this season. But what happened every year, just like Lockwood, is after Christmas, when the Christmas trees get taken down, when the holiday movies stop being played, my desire to serve people started to wear off. Be more selfish. I don't want to give to people anymore. I don't want to serve. It wasn't as easy for me to be spiritual anymore because that Christmas spirit wore off for whatever reason. But the reason, actually, I know what the reason was. The reason I had this Christmas spirit wore off because Jesus wasn't my king. He was my king for November and December, for sure. But he wasn't the king of my life. So, oh, Chris. Just like in here, I had no interest in submitting my life to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, please hear me when I say this. We can expect to celebrate the birth of the king if we refuse to make him our king. Let me say that one more time. We can expect to celebrate the birth of the king if we refuse to make him our king. Right. Jesus was born not to temporarily make us feel cheerful for a few months of the year, guys. He was born to change our lives forever. Too often we go Christmas down, Christmas down, giving gifts to Secret Santa's, watching Polar Express, decorating our houses, or listening to Jingle Bell Rock at the time of the radio. Jingle, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. Church, don't you remember that a Savior has been born? Yes. And through His birth, through His life, through His death, and through His resurrection, we can attain true life if we submit to Him. But what Herod would not do, in fact, what he was unwilling to do, 
was to submit his life to Jesus as king. So the question I want to pose to you all this morning is this, is Jesus your king? Is he your king? I'm not talking about sinning and I'm like, yeah, he's my king. Is he really your king? Because if he's not, you're missing Christmas. But now what about the Magi? What about the Magi? What, what helped them? What enabled them to embrace Christmas? My second and last point this morning is this. We embrace Christmas when we choose to look up. Because this is exactly what the Magi did. Let's go back to the text. Look what the Magi say. They say this. We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. So you imagine that the Magi were out and about doing their thing just like us this holiday season. But did you notice how they were able to stop? Stop what they're doing and look up at the star that would eventually lead them to the king. And when they saw this star, when they were looking up, nothing in front of them <coughs> mattered anymore. Nothing was as meaningful to them anymore compared to looking up and seeing this baby Jesus. And we need to do the same if we don't want to miss Christmas. We too need to look up and see God. But now this is a lot easier than a lot easier said than done though. Looking up. Seems simple. It's not that easy. Because especially in 2023, we don't like looking up. We don't. You know what we look like in 2023? We look like this. We don't look up. Where are we looking? We're looking down. But what exactly are we looking at? These things. Phones. These phones. These devices. And we can rely uh, really very heavily on these devices, can't we? Yep. So much so that I feel like we rely as much as we rely on food and water. But why is so? Why do we rely on these things? I think it's because we've convinced ourselves that our contentment, our joy, our happiness is found through this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, how many likes do you get on Instagram? How many friends do you have on Facebook? If I, if I just get this on my phone, that's when I'm going to be happy. So of course, this is our source of happiness, so of course we're going to be looking down at it. But now this doesn't stop at our phones though, does it? No. There's so many no. other things in life that we can get fixated on. We often believe that what we need, what we have to have to be happy, to find contentment is over there. No, in that crazy. relationship, in this career, in this life circumstance, in this amount of money, in this house, if I just get there, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be so happy. Yeah. And we look to all these different things in front of us that we believe will fill us up, and the reality is what we're truly looking for isn't down here, isn't right. out there, it's out there. Mm -hmm. What we're truly looking for is a relationship with a person named Jesus. He is where true contentment lies. In fact, when the angels announced the shepherds were tending it to their sheep, that a savior was born. The count shared this in the welcome. Look what it says in Luke chapter 2. It says, But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Did you catch what this angel was saying here? This angel is saying, I have good news for you, but not, not just for you specifically, but for, for all people. Not just for those who are kingdom kids. Mm. Not just for those who memorize scripture. Not just for those who avoided the big sins and like, no, I have good news for all people. And the good news is this, a savior has been born to you. But now don't miss this last part. He ends up saying that this savior has been born specifically to you. When you choose to follow this Jesus, he becomes your God. He becomes your king. He becomes your father. And this God wants to provide for you, to guide you, to protect you. And he wants to fill you up like nothing in this world can. Nothing like this can. Nothing like your life circumstances can. This is our savior. This is our king. He has been born to us. You guys, how, you guys realize how amazing this is. A miracle happened 2,000 years ago. The problem is we're just not looking up. Mm. You know, I came across a story that really struck me. 
It's about the same as Walt Disney and his daughter, Diane. So when Diane was five years old, she had her first day of kindergarten. It must have been a big day for her and the family. So she goes to class and she introduces herself. She says, hello, my name is Diane Disney. So of course the kids go wild hearing her last name. So the teacher calmed them down and proceeded to ask her, hey, what's your, what's your dad's name? She says, Papa. Walter. Kids just go berserk again. Oh my gosh. It's Disney. <laughs> and I responded, yeah, my dad is Walter Disney. What's, what's the big deal? So the teacher explained to Diane that the class was so excited because her dad was Walt Disney. She said, like, like Disneyland, Disney, like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Disney, that is your dad. Right. So Diane, after school, she stormed home later that day and saw her dad, Walt Disney, sitting at the table reading his newspaper. And she tore the newspaper from her father's hands, put her little hand on her hips and said, you never told me that you were Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, later, later in life, Diane kind of talks about this story. She says this, she says, I was dazed for a month, get this, stunned by who my father really was. Wow. I'm the mayor of I share this because, man, guys, if you take time to look up. Right. Look up this holiday season. Wow. Look up from the hustle and bustle of life. Look up from your devices. I promise you, you will see God for who he really is. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And just like Diane's story, the only reaction you will have is to be stunned. A savior has been born to you, brothers and sisters. You understand that. But the question is, are you looking up? Are you taking time to stop what you're doing tomorrow with the miracle that took place 2,000 years ago? I don't urge us, every single one of us this morning, whether you've been a Christian for 20 plus years, or maybe this is your first service, what I want to challenge you with is, don't miss Christmas. You think about the Magi, the King Mary, and the first Christmas in two completely different ways, did One embraced Christmas while the other did not. But through their example, we learned two things today. We learned, number one, that we, we miss Christmas when we refuse to make Jesus our King. Number two, we learned that to embrace Christmas, we simply need to look up. But something we must never forget. Regardless of if we're in the holiday season or not, it's this. We've got to remember the cross. Jesus was born on Christmas, yes, amen. This is something to celebrate, but it's only through his death and resurrection that we can experience true life. Right. First Corinthians chapter 11 says this. Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this, and you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. So as we take the cup and eat the bread this morning, let's, number one, let's not miss Christmas. Number two, let's remember the cross. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for Christmas. Thank you for your son being born. And how he became a savior for all people. God, I know there's so many things on our schedules. So many things that we feel like we have to do, so many things that can distract us from you. But I pray that as we take the cup and as we eat the bread this morning, let's remember you. That through your life, through your death, God, we have life. Help us remember the cross this morning. I love you. In your son's name, I pray. Amen. 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 My cat here. Oh, the cat. Death. Oh. <laughs>
afraid of God. I'm afraid of what's coming. I'm afraid to look up to my king. And I want to remind you of this. God loves you with all his heart. He sent his son Jesus to die for you, for us, because he loves us that much. And so approach him in confidence. And wherever you're at, know that you can turn to him wholeheartedly. Repent of whatever is in the way. And turn to God wholeheartedly. Do not be afraid. Because Jesus loves you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Chris, thank you so much for the message this morning. Amen. Now for the Riverside Ministry, we have our annual toy drive today. And I just want to remind you, if you brought toys, uh, please go ahead and put them in the back. Uh, thank you so much for uh, Michelle Stavnis, who headed up our toy drive this year. Uh, thank you so much, Michelle. And for the Riverside Ministry, we're going to meet again back here uh, next Sunday, the 24th. At this time, uh, we're going to have our children's ministry, all of our children's ministry, uh, come up here and they're going to put on a little performance hey. for us. And that's hey, going to be incredible. Me. And uh, I want to thank Evelyn Iram so much for uh, putting this together. She's got a fantastic job. So give it up for the kids. Thank you. Turn on your camera. Turn on your camera.
to think they have like that, the flat, this, this, <laughs> and this is so cute. I never thought you were doing your makeup. I was doing my hair too. Yeah. So get this, they had a year to practice and they're great. All the kids? Yeah.
Can they still fellowship with you? Okay. You can still fellowship uh, with the Spanish speakers and there's some refreshments down there for you. Oh, yes. Yes. That's the word I was uh, dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we uh, get to sing and celebrate and worship you that uh, your son's sweet. birth. Uh, thank you for the little children and their hearts to just want to sing and worship. Uh, it's so amazing. I pray that we can have hearts like them. I pray that during this holiday season uh, that we could be mindful of those that may be struggling going through a difficult time and that we could be a great spiritual family. Uh, to each other. Uh, I pray that you be with those that have suffered loss. I know that all around the world uh, there are, you know, just terrible things going on. War in the Middle East, in Russia, Ukraine. Uh, so many people suffering right now. I uh, pray that you be with them and you comfort them and you help us to do Go where? our part in praying uh, and being able to, Go where? Uh, you know, just be mindful that uh, you know, we live in a, in a, in a part of the Why world now? that's just very rich, very blessed. Help us to give generously to those in need and help us to reach uh, to those that are struggling. If you, you don't go, you are Jesus. still going to go. Amen. Amen. You guys are dismissed. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well. Guys, Merry Christmas. So there will be an update video soon, but yeah, bye.